today we're going to be making wood and resin jewelry um, using wood, resin, and things like paint and sculpting. We're going to be breaking the wood with a vise and then decorating it in a variety of ways. And then we're going to mix it with resin and shape it into jewelry. Before we started woodworking, I thought of wood as just like pine or oak, just real basic brown, um, plain colors. But wood comes in all kinds of colors and patterns and hardnesses. Uh, there's a scale called the Janka scale that measures the hardness of wood. And then a wood like yellow pine is like a 700. And then uh, Ipe, which is sometimes called Brazilian walnut, is um, almost 3,700. So it's a lot, a lot harder, and I wouldn't even suggest trying to break it in, in these kind of uh, instances. Yeah. Um, it really just means um, you're going to have a lot harder time breaking some wood than others. Yeah. But it's kind of like the um, Scoville scale. It's kind of like the hot sauce scale. We're Hot Ones fans, by the way. Yes. So we're using a vise to break the wood, and we had to rig it up a little bit with some dowels and um, duct tape yeah. to uh, be able to break some of this stuff. So we broke it, and here's what we got. So to reduce bubbles, we are going to pressure cast um, our resin stuff. This is the first time that we have done it. Uh, Jay has been working on our pressure pot and I will let him take over because I just think it might explode. I don't know much else about it. Yeah, that's one of the few things that I first learned about it was that it might explode. <laughs> um, after doing more research, um, the, I think the fear of it exploding is, is a little overblown. Um, <laughs> so this is a cheap Hobby Freight, I mean Harbor Freight um, pressure pot for paint that we converted into a pressure pot for casting. And you can figure, find how to do that by just Googling Harbor Freight pressure pot and you'll find a, a million tutorials on what to do and you can find some videos. There are a ton of YouTube videos on how to do it. I'll um, link to yeah, one. The one by Zach Higgins is, is probably the, the one that most people have watched. He has a second video where he adds a little more information and this will be our first time doing it so we're no experts but um, what, what I have learned is uh, the first thing you need to do when you get one of these is just throw away all the fittings that it comes with and replace them all with, with new fittings. And in the second video that Zach Higgins does, he suggests using this Loctite 545 instead of using um, thread tape. He said it works a lot better. Um, Maybe maybe we won't maybe we won't we'll have that on camera. Maybe we'll cut the cut cat, cat licking his own butt. butt. Yeah. Um, okay. So I don't know where we were, <laughs> but uh, let's start. We're talking about the lock type yeah. and stuff. Okay. Okay. So um, in the second video I mentioned that Zach Higgins does, he suggests using this thread locker, Loctite 545, and instead of the tape, thread tape. Um, and I used that and it seemed to work pretty well. When you use it, any runoff seems to stay wet and you might think, well, man, when is this stuff going to cure? But it actually is anaerobic and it cures in the absence of oxygen. So inside where the threads are locked together, that has dried and cured. You just can't see it. Um, so that's one thing. Throw away all the old fittings, get new fittings, and use that Loctite 545 to put the new fittings in. The next thing to do is throw away the old gasket that it comes with and get you a better rubber gasket. And then once you've done that, you want to coat the lip of the pot with this silicone paste. And I, I coated both sides of the gasket too, inside the lip and then put the gasket in and sealed the, the gasket with it and put it all over this rim. Um, so, I wish I hadn't touched it. Yeah, I'm sure you, I'm sure you do. I wish you hadn't done that. 
So the last thing they say to do with this thing is, um, you're welcome. The last thing they say to do with this thing is once you've found a good um, fit, you know, you've kind of tested the, the top and you've found a place where it fits really well, to use a marker and mark somewhere on here with maybe a line or a symbol so you know where to line it up at and on which point to line it up. All right, and that should help you um, pressure cast because these things are notorious for leaking air. So that should help you um, with that issue. And then we made this little carousel to put our blanks on just to keep them from tipping over and then the resin pouring out. This will be an experiment too because this we just made this for this um, to fit down into here. Yeah. The bottom of this uh, is rounded, so we had to make a thing that makes the bottom flat. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Just a piece of plywood that we had laying around, some, some old scrap plywood. So, what we're going to do next is we are going to take our broken wood. We are. We're going to take our broken wood and we're going to make some molds. Um, on some of them we're just going to use tape. We'll talk about that and then on uh, some of the ones for pendants and things like that, some of the smaller pieces we are planning on laying flat. Let's get started!
star of shaping the jewelry, I'll let Jill talk a little bit about ring making. We'll put a chart in the description that shows the corresponding diameter to each ring size. First of all, if you need to um, size someone's finger before you do this, these are good um, little ring sizers to let somebody, you know, try on different sizes and see what works best for them. Um, and then once I know the ring size, I look um, at the chart. I've just gotten a little set of uh, Forstner bits. I think I used the uh, 17 the most, which has made it kind of wrecked over here. But uh, you don't actually have to buy a whole set. Usually like a 17 millimeter and an 18 will get you a lot of the most common sizes. The most common sizes for women is usually uh, between a six and a seven and a half or so. And the most common size for men is a 10. And so uh, when you look at the chart, it tells you the diameter in millimeters and then you just need the same size uh, bit. Now, when I'm trying to size things because you can't get uh, Forstner bits in every single size you need. Um, I use a ring mandrel and I just take the ring and see, you know, about what size it is. Um, this one is about a seven. Um, and I just size it that way. I also, while I'm uh, working on them, I use a digital caliper that tells me, you know, I can check and see um, how thick the ring is, which I usually do at least four millimeters because wooden rings are um, more likely to break than metal, of course, but um, sometimes people forget and wear them in the shower um, or something and get them you know, drenched, and that can cause them to break. So I try to give um, each one about a four millimeter um, clip. I just, I just really use the Forstner bit, and then if I need to make them a little bigger, I'll take um, the Dremel and just sand until I get it right. Just keep testing it. And that's about it for ring sizes.
three pours. Uh, the first time we used tape and that carousel thing, and it was pretty much a complete failure. Um, resin leaked all out of the plastic tape. Uh, I think mostly because of the way it was applied. I started at the bottom and went up, and then the resin just would leak through the layers, and it was a mess. Um, second time, we used foam core board, and we read that you can use um, like Pam cooking spray, you know, like um, Baker's release stuff, and that also was a complete failure. It was worse than the first that pour. Was pretty bad. Yeah, because it just it just the resin just stuck to the to the the, the paper so backing on the on the It's like it board. almost uh, soaked into it. it yeah, was terrible. <laughs> it was a mess. So our third pour, we used this um, plastic plascolite. Has like a um, a you know. Layer, you peel, peel, you peel off, and some actual smooth on mold release, and this worked very well. Um, third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. The other two charm times were definitely not a charm. <laughs> so while the first um, carousel was pretty much a failure, I think we're going to try to make something maybe um, square that. Um, we can make, we can divide into, into layers. Well, yeah. layers and also little cells, I guess you would say. So we can pour them um, flat. We found that works pretty good. And then you don't, you only have the perimeter and the bottom to, to peel it out of. Um, in our f second and third castings, we used um, some old cigar boxes as our like to contain the resin and the mold so in case there were any leaks it wouldn't get all over the inside of the pressure pot and that worked pretty good um, you got to basically be prepared to to lose the um, the um, what's that? we don't smoke cigars at <laughs> noon, especially enough to have boxes laying around no, we don't. but stay tuned to our channel for us making cigar box guitars. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that in. Sealing the um, mold good with hot glue yeah, helped. It did. And we uh, used the aluminum tape. Yeah, a good bit. that works pretty good too. I, I, I found um, for that last pour, if you start at the top and with the tape, and work your way down. It's kind of like you're working in like a waterproofing method, where this layer is over top of this layer. So anything inside is just going to go farther down. If you do it like this, then any resin can slide, can leak through there in between that gap. So you want to do it like that. And then at the very bottom, we just kind of twisted the um, what was left over of the clear tape and then wrapped it real tight with the aluminum foil tape and that made a pretty nice seal at the bottom. And before we did any of that, we coated the, um, the plastic, the plastic white stuff with a lot of this um, mold release. And actually the next time we do this we're going to spray even more than we did that yeah. time because uh, it worked, but it would have worked better if we had just put a little more on there. Yeah. You could tell when, when we, some of them were perfect and some of them it would all come off but a few little pieces and you'd have to chip it off and we could tell well, there, there were areas where we didn't spray enough mold release. We're going to put uh, some of the stuff we made on Etsy so we'll put a link in the description to that. In this crazy time things like this don't seem very important but we hope this video inspires you or at least passes some time. Stay well. Stay home. Go out in your backyard or your garage and try to make something better today. If you've hung around this long, give us a like. If you want to keep up with us, subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Helper boy. He's a helper. He helper.